This video is sponsored by the fine folk over at SCD Keys. On this channel, we're always talking about saving money and getting great deals, and that's what you can do by picking up a $50 PlayStation Store card from SCD Keys. If you head over to their website, link is down below, and search for a $50 PlayStation Store card, you'll find it. Go ahead and add it to your card, and use our specialized promo code GC3 to save 3% on your order. That'll bring the cost of the card down to $46.64. You can check out and choose your method of payment. Your key will show up on your account, and boom, just like that, you got a $50 PSN card a little bit cheaper. Not only do they have great deals on PlayStation Store credit, they also have Windows 10 and other software heavily discounted, and you can get great deals on those as well. Again, check out the link to SCD Keys in the description box below. We've got a lot of news to cover in today's video, a lot coming out of QuakeCon, a lot of positive Bethesda news, but some negative Bethesda news as well as they're blocking the resale of a secondhand game. Polygon's got the entire story on that, so I wanted to take a look at it. Fallout 76 has gotten a new details from a QuakeCon panel, and it gives us a lot more information about the game ahead of its November release. Rage 2 is another upcoming Bethesda published title being done by Avalanche Games, and while I'm not completely sold on it, it is looking pretty good the more and more I see of it. However, the game will not have multiplayer but will have a quote-unquote social component. And lastly, we just saw gameplay of Doom Eternal, but what about the multiplayer? We saw single-player footage, but multiplayer has always been a big part of Doom. Well, we got some information on that as well out of QuakeCon. And lastly, I do want to give a shout to a PlayStation Plus one-year subscription card that has just gone back in stock. It's a deal we've mentioned before, but it seems to go in stock and out of stock very quickly. So I want to give another mention to that at the end of this video. First, let's talk about the craziest story, and that is Bethesda blocking the resale of a secondhand game. Philadelphia's Ryan Hub recently contacted Polygon to explain that he's been recently forced to stop selling a copy of Evil Within 2 by Bethesda. Now, why was he stopped to sell this game? Well, because he was selling a brand new sealed copy of the game on eBay and was defining it as sealed. That sounds fine. If you're selling a sealed game on eBay, I think it's fine to label it as a new product, even though your hands did touch the game. I don't think that classifies as the game being used. Well, Bethesda seems to disagree as Bethesda's legal firm sent Hup a letter and Hup forwarded that to Polygon, warning that the game must be taken down and threatening legal action for non-compliance. So the issue is the game is brand new. However, Hup did touch the game and it's not being sold in its original form which would include a warranty so you don't get the warranty the letter specifically states that the game is materially different from genuine products quote unless you remove all bethesda products from your storefront stop selling any and all bethesda products immediately and identify all sources of bethesda products you are selling we intend to file a lawsuit against you so that is some insane news bethesda going after this guy seems a little bit ridiculous i don't know how big of a deal this is and this does come across a little bit malicious on Boris's official website Here's what it says. Under what is known as the first sale doctrine, once a trademark owner sells a product, the buyer ordinarily can resell the product without infringing the owner's mark. However, the first sale doctrine does not apply when a reseller sells a trademark good that is materially different from the company's genuine good. Case law has established a few important principles relating to material differences. This includes that one, the threshold of materiality is considered low. Two, only a single material difference is necessary to give rise to a trademark infringement claim. And three, material differences do not have to be physical differences. So I guess if if you want to go by the word of the law, Bethesda does have something to go on here, and if this did end up in court, something probably would come out of it. It just seems so excessive that someone trying to sell a brand new Evil Within 2 copy has to go through this. That Bethesda's legal firm actually went after somebody demanding that they remove their listing. Now, I'm sure that the Evil Within 2 people have sold new copies before on eBay. This can't be the first copy sold, so it'll be interesting to see how this story plays out. Hopefully, we hear more about it very soon. Okay, so that's some negative Bethesda news. Let's talk about some positive Bethesda news. Fallout 76 has gotten a slew of new details on PvP, death penalty, music, and more. There's a post over on DualShockers that goes over everything and about PvP, Howard said that once you hit someone, you do reduced damage. If you engage, you do full damage. There is a cap based on level. If you kill someone leveled much higher than you, you get a much bigger reward, and the opposite is also true. However, if someone kills you and you go out to seek revenge, the cap's reward is double. The PvP in the game doesn't begin from the get-go. It's actually activated at level 5, so you get to figure out the nuances of the game and then you can engage in the pvp you can flag yourself as a pacifist so that you won't deal any damage to others so that's pretty cool the death penalty isn't too bad you drop your junk junk is not your whole equipment but it is something you can use to make and upgrade items you can go back and recover it if no one picks it up and you can also store it into your stash and it's also said that 80 percent of the game is the fallout people know and love and 20 percent is brand new now i don't know how people are gonna take to that 80 percent being the fallout people know i think that's kind of to be expected 
Fallout 76 looks a lot more like Fallout 4. So I think they're just changing on some in-depth aspects that we're not going to see right away, but it'll be interesting to see how people respond to this game. We do know that a beta is coming in October. It seems like as far as Fallout games go, not everyone is completely sold on Fallout 76. I'm interested to see if that hype will turn around. It does seem like there are people excited for Fallout 76. I should rephrase it in saying that Fallout 76 seems a lot more divisive than, say, Fallout 4, where everyone was excited for that game. Just about every gamer dropped what they were playing to play Fallout 4, but with Fallout 76, it seems to be a game that, yes, there's a portion super excited, but there's another portion that isn't completely yet sold, and they're probably gonna wait to hear more or even play the beta. Fallout 76 will hit the PlayStation 4 on November 14th, so the release isn't all too far off. Begin by inquiring with the locals. Gently coax them into cooperation. Use a little elbow grease if you have to. Another Bethesda published game is Rage 2. That game is being developed by Avalanche as well as id Software. Both those are coming together. And that seems like a match made in heaven for Rage 2. Avalanche have done so much work on open world games with games such as Just Cause. Well, Eurogamer spoke to Tim Willits, the head of id Software, and here's what he said about the game's multiplayer. Quote, we will have a social component, but it's not your typical multiplayer. We're not quite ready to talk about it, but we understand community is important and we understand connecting with other gamers is important. But there's not a true what I call classic multiplayer. So you're not running around together with your friends because we feel we have enough hours of entertainment for your money. We feel like we have a good offering. He continued by saying, our way of thinking is making the tale of the game longer. Our fans put hundreds of hours of their lives into the game and we want to give them the experience worth their time. We have plans to do all sorts of things, free plus paid updates and obviously some dynamic elements. When asked about microtransactions, he said, ah, I don't know yet. You need to be careful when you say things like loot boxes. Ah, oh my God, loot boxes. We won't have loot boxes, but yes, we are trying to figure out how it'll work. It's a balance. You don't want people to feel like you're trying to chase them for money, but you want to give people the opportunity to have the experience they want and to extend that tail. So we're still working some of those plans out. So it does sound like microtransactions will be present in Rage 2. Not a big fan of that, but it does seem like more of a normality in gaming. Rage 2 is a game I have some interest in. Again, Avalanche coming together with id Software for a game like Rage 2. I think there's a lot of potential. We'll find out relatively soon as Rage 2 is due out spring of 2019. And lastly, speaking of multiplayer, while Rage 2 won't have traditional multiplayer, traditional multiplayer will be returning in Doom Eternal, the second Doom game on current-gen consoles. And id Software's Marty Strand spoke to Polygon and said that Doom Eternal will bring back Doom multiplayer. Here's what he said, quote, The invasion stuff is just kind of one of the ways that we're going to make the Doom experience social. But we're not really going deep into that. We are working on a PvP component. It is new. It is not an extension of what we did last time, so it's new. I think that's a good thing. While everybody really enjoyed Doom, I think everybody really enjoyed it because of the single player campaign. The multiplayer was there, but it wasn't anything to write home about. And Doom Eternal, based on how the gameplay looks, I think it could be a very fun multiplayer experience so hopefully they deliver on that front because if they deliver on the single player front again which they look to be doing and they deliver on a great multiplayer experience doom eternal could be one of if not the best first person shooter of this generation doom eternal does look to be a ways out hopefully we'll see it in 2019 but it will be coming to playstation 4 xbox one pc and again to nintendo switch so it'll be interesting to see what kind of compromises they make once again to get it on switch they got the first game on switch so i'm sure they can get eternal on switch as well and lastly i do want to give a shout ebay has got the sony playstation plus one year membership subscription card for $46.99 once again it goes on sale for this price quite often but it tends to go out of stock rather quickly so if you want a one year membership extension to your PlayStation Plus subscription this is the way to do so I see a lot of comments of people asking whether or not this will extend their current subscription yes it doesn't override your subscription so if you still have say a month left the 12 months will be added on to that month so you'll have 13 months left it's not just gonna override that month and then you lose that month no that absolutely does not happen and for those of you that are paying month to month for PlayStation Plus. Come on, $10 a month is not worth it when you can get it for $46.99. And even if you're paying the full $60 a year, you can get it a little bit cheaper. And maybe if the PlayStation Plus games don't impress you all that much, 
it'll sting a little bit less because you're paying a little bit less. So check it out, $46.99. Description box down below, you can have a look at that. That's gonna conclude this video. Let us know your thoughts. What do you think about Bethesda blocking the resale of a secondhand game? That just seems so odd to me. It is a sealed copy of The Evil Within 2. That's the caveat. It wasn't a used game, and because it was promoted as quote-unquote new and it doesn't have that warranty, I guess Bethesda had a problem with that. But outside of that, we've also gotten new details on Fallout 76. Rage 2 looks to have some microtransactions, and it'll have some sort of social component. Traditional multiplayer will be back in Doom Eternal, and it'll be something new, not an extension of what they did with the first game. So it'll be interesting to see how that turns out. And again, PlayStation Plus one-year membership, description box down below, $46.99. It is back in stock, so have a look at that. That's gonna wrap this one up. Sound off with your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.